I just got my hands on the Galaxy XR and I want to do a deep dive on some of the main features, compare it to Vision Pro, which I've been using consistently for the last couple of years. Let's get right into it with a pass through test. And of course, all the audio you'll hear today is either from the Galaxy headset versus the Vision Pro. So you can be the judge of what you think sounds better there. Immediately after putting this on, I think pass through is not quite as clear as Vision Pro, but it's pretty good. I would say it's passable. First test for true science here. Let's look from right next to my couch here at this eye chart. I can pretty clearly read the fourth row down L. P L P E D. Beyond that, it's, I'd really be guessing. Uh, so from there, it's pretty clear. I will mention, uh, I haven't gotten my optical inserts yet for these goggles. Uh, I have them for the Vision Pro, but I'll take them out of the Vision Pro when I test the same eye chart to see really how well I can read. In the Vision Pro, standing at the same spot, looking at the same eye chart, and that fourth row, L P E D, easy to read. The next row does become a bit easier to read. It's still a little difficult, but I think it's what, F-E-C-F-D maybe? Uh, it's, gosh, I would say maybe 10% clearer than the Galaxy headset. It's not just about how clear text might look though when you're talking about pass-through. It's how do your hands look? Does the environment kind of warp it all when it's trying to uh, kind of render this environment as you look around? Is there any blur? And it seems pretty solid. It's a high frame rate. I'm not getting dizzy or anything as I look around. Walking around, it's totally comfortable just to use pass-through mode normally. Pretty happy with that, but yeah, just general clarity is not quite as good. This is another area that I think is tough for pass-through sometimes, almost this HDR view where you have a very bright outdoor area and then your inside space. This actually looks nice and clear and even looking far out there, not seeing much distortion. I would stick to maybe that 10% metric saying the Vision Pro pass-through feels maybe about 10% better, clearer, smoother than Galaxy. But gosh, if I was going to do just a quick A-B test, it wouldn't immediately be super obvious that the Vision Pro is that much better unless I am trying to really focus and read on some text that's far away. I actually do notice that difference more looking at that text. But beyond pass-through, let's move on to the next item. One of the big benefits of mixed reality is having windows floating anywhere in your space. So let's take a look at moving windows, pinning windows, etc. Anywhere around the window, I can grab and move it. On Vision Pro, I'm able to kind of put that way out there in front of me, like against the wall. With Galaxy, I don't really have much of a threshold in terms of like how far I can push that out there. So if I want it against the wall, I've got to get up and actually put it over here, but it's still possible, of course. Now let's sit down and resize this window. It's just like Vision Pro, same animation and everything, except when I expand this window, it turns blank. It's not auto resizing the content until I let go. And here we're back to Vision Pro just for a resizing comparison. And here we are again. So it's interesting, it actually is stretching this out all the way edge to edge. If I make it more vertical like that, it's then resizing the content based on vertical versus horizontal, which is pretty interesting. On Vision Pro, you're only able to keep a fixed ratio. That's as big as I can make the screen. Plenty big enough, and it seems like it allows you to go a bit bigger compared to Vision Pro, where we have limits. And oh, look at that. I just selected, and it got even bigger while I tried to move it. So a little finicky on some of that stuff, but let's move it back and put it a realistic type of setting here. I might watch my content like this. Now, I tried to put it against the wall. You can see it's floating a little bit in front of the wall. So let's really get that nice and tight. That seems like it's against the wall. Something I've noticed with Galaxy XR versus Vision Pro is this kind of pinning of windows in your space is not as smooth. It doesn't feel as anchored in the real world. Now, take a look as I, again, see that it's very close to the wall. But even as I move my head a little bit, I can see the screen moving just a tiny bit. And it's going to get much worse as I walk around. Now we can see the screen is about a foot into the wall. And it's moving more and more as I move. 
when I come back, the screen does start to come back towards me. So it's a reminder that it is a virtual screen. The fact that it moves so much as I walk around, although as I go and sit back down, but it actually looks maybe a foot closer to me than when I first left it. Moving windows around me looks totally fine. Having multiple windows open all works as expected. It's just a little bit more of a delay compared to Vision Pro when trying to resize these windows and seeing the content update. Now let's try some of these AI features that you guys might have seen in the marketing. Hey Google, organize my windows. There you go, windows are tidied up. I would have probably put Netflix in front of me here, but that's okay. Now let's look at our hands and pass through. By default, the hands turn into shadows as they go over content. And I mean, it looks pretty good and smooth, but to really see how well your hands occlude the content, you wanna see your real hands. And that's actually a feature that's hidden in the settings. So let's turn that on. And now we have our real hands, just like Vision Pro, showing up over the content. And I always like to wave my hands like this and see how quickly it's able to occlude the content with accuracy. And it does an okay job. Uh, even when my hands are kind of spread out as much as I can and not moving, you can see there's some background that's showing up there. And then when I kind of move my hand like that, it's a bit delayed, but not the end of the world, honestly. It's just not quite as smooth as Vision Pro. Here on the Vision Pro, you can see even around each finger, it just looks like it only covers the digital area. And then another interesting thing, when we do have this hand occlusion setting turned on, if we go into a virtual environment, it turns off again. So it seems like that setting does not apply to virtual environments. Now, speaking of virtual environments, they are very devoid of life, I would say. There's a bit of a 3D effect here, but it feels kind of flat and dull, and there's no movement. It feels like just a standard photo. The amount of time that Apple puts into their virtual environments versus what we see here, I mean, it's night and day. So not impressed at all, honestly, with these virtual environments, but uh, let's take a look at a couple of them so you can at least see There are a few more because, I mean, I think these are easier to make. So here's one. Yeah, we got a little bit of some water reflection here. But yeah, it's, it, it's just the atmosphere does not match the quality, the detail compared to what we are used to with Apple's virtual environments. I'll show you one more. This might be my favorite one still. I mean, it just looks like a panoramic photo pretty much. There we got a couple of little leaves there, but uh, not to the level of Apple. Let's turn off environments and let's take a quick look at typing. Notice how as I start to finger type like this, you see the pointers, which I think is a little bit confusing actually. Like if I'm gonna type my name, Michael, it's as I get closer, yes, it works, but it's just a little strange to see those little dots show up as I'm trying to type. And see, I missed the E there. I'm gonna try this again. Missed the E again. It's just a little weird. If we look at like hitting a P for example, let's clear this out. It's almost hard to explain when you're comparing to Vision Pro, which I'm so used to typing on. It just feels like it's not quite perfect in terms of like that hit box. I don't know, you might not be able to notice this watching in a video, but it's just a little bit weird watching my fingers and these pointers go around. It's, I was trying to hit basket. It's just hard to finger type quickly where on Vision Pro, I just go boop, 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 and it works a little bit better. After just typing for a while back on the Galaxy XR, this typing does feel better just overall. Yeah, I mean, this is much smoother. I feel much more confident that like when I click a letter, it's the right letter. And when my finger touches the keyboard, it's the right distance. Galaxy just didn't feel quite right.
Now in terms of the menus and navigation, we do have a pretty similar system compared to Vision Pro. If we look at our right hand and tap, that brings us to the main menu. Once we're in here, we can go to our open apps and kind of look at that. We can also do that by holding and then moving to the right. And that brings us our recent apps. Now we can, of course, just swipe through. But with Galaxy XR, you actually have the option to have a pointer based on hand tracking. And then I can move through menus, select items like that. So if eye tracking just isn't really cutting it for you, you always have this backup. Like for example, if I'm trying to click on notifications, I can use eye tracking alone. And if I keep my hand down here and then tap, there we go. So it's a nice mix of both options. There have been cases where I just can't quite look at the right menu item. And then I'll say, oh, you know, what? just to be sure, let's go to search. In terms of eye tracking accuracy, I would say it's actually pretty similar to Vision Pro. Now we just have a nice little benefit to be able to add an extra layer of selection if needed. Now let's pull up our Mac screen into this device. There's no way to do it just by default. You have to download a third-party app from the Play Store. So I found that Virtual Desktop works best. It's 25 bucks for a one-time payment to buy Virtual Desktop, but I'll show you what it looks like. So as I open it, I got my computer right here. Now you'll notice a bit of the change in audio here. Virtual desktop, when it connected to my PC, somehow really messed up the audio recording from the headset. So I'll try to narrate as best as I can what I was discussing when I had this connected. First off, here's the screen by default. Text is readable, but it is a little bit pixelated, not as good as Vision Pro. I would not want to be spending hours in here reading text, but it's passable if you want to spend an hour maybe doing some work. When it comes to resizing the screen, it is not as straightforward as it is with Apple. There are a lot of different menu options here up top and at the bottom, you can go ahead and do some 3D effects if you're watching a 3D movie, let's say, but there's also ways to add or remove monitors, add a virtual keyboard, et cetera. So if we add a monitor, we can see it just pops up right to the side here and then we can bring more of our windows over to the right hand side, just like that. And if we want to resize that monitor, we can select that and then just use our hand to change the size and pinch again once we found the size that we like. So it works, but it's just a little bit strange when we're trying to resize our position, our monitor, when we can't just drag the window and resize it like we could with any other window throughout the rest of the headset interface. We can go ahead and keep adding monitors though. So here's an example, adding one more. But now the settings just get a little bit strange because these monitors are kind of like on top of each other. So here I made a mistake trying to change one monitor, but interacting with the, the one behind it here. But once you figure it out and spend some time with it, you are more flexible in terms of how you can set up your monitors compared to Vision Pro. But with that extra flexibility comes kind of a little bit of uh, jankiness in terms of how smooth it is to get everything working together. But once you have those monitors set up how you like them and spaced out, you can drag and drop windows across all these monitors in free space like this. And let's say I want to watch some YouTube up top while I'm working on the other monitors. You can see that that is totally possible. And we're back to Vision Pro again, showing just kind of the default screen here. And of course, you can change it to three different screen modes. Very easy to resize and move around. Here's the wide and then ultra wide. So that all looks really good and smooth. Also, let's take a quick look at the Galaxy avatars. You can use these in any video conferencing. It is not that great, obviously. I mean, just take a look compared to the spatial personas in Vision Pro. Now, during the keynote, of course, they did mention they are going to have uh, their own, let's say, spatial persona competitor for the Galaxy XR, but it's not available yet. It looks pretty good in the demo, but we'll just have to wait and see. But let's take a quick look. Uh, hands are pretty decent. But then the facial animation's not great. My mouth looks okay, like it moves, of course, as I try to go, let's say, up, and I move my nose left and right. Mm, not too much. If I move my eyebrows a little bit there, it does track my eyes if I move them around. But yeah, as I kind of move my hands up over, like, yeah, it's not that great. But there you go. That's what the uh, the avatars look like at their current state right now. And then, of course, just for comparison, we were looking at just that cartoon avatar from the Galaxy. But I mean, this has gotten so good on Apple. So it'll be really interesting to see what 
Samsung or Galaxy comes up with for their version of spatial personas uh, to see if they're able to get to this level of fidelity compared to what the Vision Pro has. Let's take a quick look at the uh, spatializing of photos. Oops, left it over there. I want to spatialize a video and a photo to see how this works. Although I've been stuck on processing video, I uploaded this a while ago, it's still not working. So unfortunately, we're just gonna have to try to spatialize a photo. To do that, we go to Immersive. And then I already spatialized it, it took about three seconds. And now we have kind of this 3D view and it looks pretty good. If we compare that to Vision Pro, I mean, it's pretty similar, honestly. I wouldn't say there's one that's much better than the other. I think they both do a pretty good job. And now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this in the recording, but this would be a spatialized video that shows up in the XR section of the YouTube app meant for Galaxy XR. It looks pretty good. It's not really looking like full 3D, I would say. The effect is adding to the immersiveness. Like it's, it doesn't take away. Uh, I think I would prefer to watch content in this type of modified 3D format. All right, we're at over 15 minutes now. I want to try to keep this short, but there's really so much to compare with these two headsets. Overall, I think the Galaxy XR is a solid product for the price. It's about half the price compared to the Vision Pro. And depending on what specifically you want to use this for, I think you're getting more than half the value. Overall, it's just not as polished of a product. But this is Gen 1. This has been out for a few days now versus the Vision Pro, which has had software updates consistently for almost a couple of years. I'm hoping that Samsung will catch up in terms of things like fluidity of the OS, of course, those spatial personas, and just making things a little bit smoother across the board. This really reminds me of the early days of Android versus iOS, where Apple really does give a more polished experience, but it's a bit more locked down. With Android, you can install more apps. There really is kind of more content as well. And we see that with the Galaxy XR but just the overall feel of the device is just not quite up to par. And when you talk about feel, it's actually really important when you're talking about mixed reality, that feel of moving windows around, snapping a window to a wall, making it have its place in your world, it all feels really important. Depends on how much you really care about those details, but at the end of the day, how much are you willing to spend for that polished experience? Now, in terms of an overall recommendation, if you are on the Mac ecosystem, like I am, it's kind of tough to suggest the Galaxy XR because Vision Pro does such a good job with the virtual display and just integration with all of your iOS apps. And also, you can now get a used Vision Pro M2 for about the same price as probably a new Galaxy XR. So my general recommendation for most people would be if you're new to this space and want to get a headset, I would still probably recommend going for a used M2 Vision Pro. I know there have been some questions about the M5. There are definitely some edge cases where you're gonna get a lot more value out of that new processor. I think for most people, the value is probably not there to buy a brand new M5 Vision Pro, unless you're just looking for that top of the line experience. I know there's a lot more to discuss between these two headsets. I'm going to continue to do some videos and kind of comparisons and digging deeper into the Galaxy XR headset and software. So keep an eye out for those. And then for this guy, I did take some quick measurements to see how big this headset can get. It looks like it's about eight inches from side to side and then another eight inches from the front of the forehead pad to the back pad. And that's all I got for now. Let me know if there are any other specifics that you wanna see between these two headsets or just questions generally about the Galaxy XR. I will continue to be digging in and otherwise thank you for watching and see you on the next one.